from the Ministry of the Presidency in Georgetown, this is This Week with the President. Welcome to another edition of This Week with the President, a weekly news magazine which provides you with an in-depth look at the policies, programs and work of the President of Ghana in his quest to realize the good life for all Guyanese. I'm your host, Gomiti Gangadin. Thank you for joining us. In the highlights this week, President Granger says social cohesion and political inclusion critical to Guyana's future. Public Service Commission of Inquiries report handed over to President Granger. Bartica officially a tongue neonatal intensive care unit opens at Bartica Hospital. President Granger urges Guyanese to see diversity as an asset and not liability. Do stay with us. With Ghana's 50th independence anniversary just days away, President David Granger issued a call for wider political inclusiveness in order to build a more cohesive nation and repair and rebuild the trust which has been broken as a result of divisive politics. The President on May 12 delivered his fourth address in Parliament since taking office last year, a record for a sitting President in the history of the country. The president said that the days of the winner-takes-all approach has made the political arena a battlefield that is fueled by racial rivalry and all the conflicts that has severely hindered growth and development over the past five decades. The first 50 years were about overcoming a hostile economic environment. The next 50 years must be different. Let us use this special year to usher in an era of social peace, political collaboration, and economic prosperity for this and all future generations. The National Assembly was born in this hallowed chamber where the instruments of independence were handed over to the first Prime Minister of Independent Guyana. It is fitting for me to come back here today to plead with the same National Assembly to use the opportunity of Guyana's 50th anniversary to unite our people. The President told the House that the government has initiated the constitution reform process that must aim at strengthening the constitutional provision that speaks to an inclusionary system of governance. The constitution of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana is an instrument of political inclusion. It has now become a mantra that, and I quote, the principal objective of the state is to establish an inclusionary system of democracy by providing increasing opportunities for the participation of citizens and their organizations in the management and decision-making processes of the state, with particular emphasis on those areas of decision-making that directly affect their well-being. Mr. Speaker, the government has initiated the constitution reform process. It must aim at strengthening this particular provision to ensure that the intended inclusionary system is made to work. It must be extended, that is to say the process, the reform process must be extended to involve consultations with citizens in their communities in all 10 regions. Every eligible elector in this republic must be given the chance to be heard so that our country could advance with a constitution in which we all have confidence. He also spoke of his administration's commitment to building a green economy and to advance the process of adopting renewable energy sources as it is mandated under the constitution of Guyana. Article 36 of our constitution states, and I quote, in the interests of the present and future generations, the state will protect and make rational use of its lands, mineral and water resources, as well as its fauna and flora, and will take all appropriate measures to ensure and improve the environment. This is the constitution, not an option. Economic change, therefore, is compatible with stewardship of the environment and measures for sustainable development. The transition towards renewable sources of energy 
as part of our green development thrust must be accelerated. Investments in solar, wind, hydro, biomass sources of energy must be augmented. The approach to a green economy will wean this country from its addiction to fossil fuels, fuels which exact a heavy burden on the economy. The president reminded all members of the House that independence offered an opportunity for national unity. However, 50 years later, the goal is yet to be achieved. In this regard, he called on them to make a solemn covenant with the Guyanese nation to work together to reunite the nation and make it a better place for Guyanese in the coming years. If there is one thing President Granger, since his assumption to office on May 16, 2015, has been consistent about, it is the need for Guyanese to come together as one, as the motto, one people, one nation, one destiny, suggests. At almost all opportunities presented, the President has spoken of the need and the importance of putting aside differences, whether they are political, cultural, ethnic, or otherwise, so that a country can develop. Social cohesion recognizes that our nation is now and always will be multi religious, multi ethnic, and multicultural. This is the nation is forever. To add to this focus, the Ministry of Social Cohesion headed by Minister Amna Ali was established. Since the ministry has been established, several initiatives around the country have been executed with the most recent being the National Day of Prayer, which was held on Wednesday at the Durban Park. The event was specially organized to coincide with the observance of Social Cohesion Day, which is now being held on May 11 every year. President Granger, who delivered the feature address at the event, used the opportunity to once again call on Guyanese to use Social Cohesion Day as an opportunity to reject divisive political culture and instead deepen its commitment to a more inclusive society. The President said that Guyana's diversity must be seen as a valuable asset and never as a liability. We are proud to belong to a society of many faiths. We are proud of the tapestry of ethnicity. We are proud to possess the rich flora and fauna. We dare we cherish our very landscape. Social cohesion respects these differences, the differences between various social groups. The president noted that social cohesion does not require persons to abandon their cultural practices and to adopt another. Rather, it occurs greater recognition to every ethnic group and encourages the promotion of their practices. The president also noted that it is most auspicious that Social Cohesion Day is being observed at the start of celebrations for Ghana's Golden Jubilee Independence Anniversary as the nation prepares to usher in a new era. Social Cohesion Day is observed today at the start of the celebration of our Golden Jubilee of Independence. It presents the nation with a golden opportunity to discard its divisive political culture and to deepen its commitment to a more inclusive society. Social Cohesion Day is about creating a sense of belonging and combating exclusion. It is based on the belief that citizens share a moral community which enables them to trust each other. Social Cohesion Day has great and appreciates people's different backgrounds. The head of state who had been advocating for national unity since during his years in the political opposition said that social cohesion respects the differences between the various social groups. However, if left unattended, he noted, these differences can create distrust and weaken people's sense of belonging. The head of state charged the younger generation to take up the challenge to repair past damages, to restore trust, to rebuild the bases of a more community and to demonstrate how we can cooperate and coexist with each other. We can construct a more cohesive society by doing more to eliminate extreme poverty, by doing more to eradicate the worst forms of inequality, including gender inequality. 
by doing more to ensure equal access to education for everyone, by doing more to enable greater participation and inclusion at the political level through regular general, regional, and municipal local government elections, by doing more to enforce employment and anti-discrimination laws which ensure the health, happiness, and safety of our women, of our working people, of our girl children, and our infants. Social cohesion, ladies and gentlemen, is about fostering greater integration in our nation. Meanwhile, Minister of Social Cohesion Ms. Amna Ali remarked that Social Cohesion Day will be recorded in history as a demonstration of the administration's commitment to ensuring that every Guyanese feels valued and appreciated. Since May of 2015, our administration has promised to do all within its power to ensure that Guyana becomes a functionally transformative and sustainable nation in every aspect, spiritual, moral, economic, political, and social. This event this morning signifies that we will endeavor to inculcate every component that will facilitate that process. Prayers from the Muslim, Christian, Hindu, Baha'i and Rastafarian communities were offered and cultural performances and musical renditions were done by representatives of the Muslim, Hindu and Christian communities. The event was also attended by First Lady Ms. Sandra Granger, Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu and his wife Mistress Sita Nagamutu, Speaker of the National Assembly Dr. Barton Scotland and other ministers of the government and members of the diplomatic corps. Professionalism, efficiency and impartiality must become three hallmarks of the public service sector in Guyana. This has always been the push of President Granger since his assumption to office in May 2015. As a matter of fact, one of the first things he did upon his assumption to office as president was to convene a meeting with the permanent secretaries of all government ministries where he expressed these expectations. At the meeting which was held in May 2015 at the Arthur Chung Convention Center, President Granger made it clear to the senior public servants that it is his wish that the public service sector is restructured in such a way that it becomes unbribable. The president had stressed the need for a properly functioning public service, as he had noted that this is vital to the smooth running of any country. He described the public service as the engine of the executive, which must be efficient if services such as housing, education, law and order, and infrastructure are to be made available. But the engine needs oil, the president says, and that oil must be in the form of enhanced training, improved working conditions and better wages and salaries. It was with this thought in mind that on August 17, 2016, the Commission of Inquiry into the Public Service was established by the President to inquire into, report on and make recommendations on the role, functions, recruitment process, remuneration and conditions of service for public servants. This morning, after almost nine months, the commission, which was headed by Professor Harold Lutchman and included Mr. Sandra Jones and Mr. Samuel Gulseran, presented the completed report to President David Granger at the Ministry of the Presidency. The President, in brief remarks after receiving the report, said that it has always been his vision for a strong public sector, one which is not only trained and educated, but which can ensure that efficiency is present, regardless of whichever government is in power. And there was need for a careful study of our public service because those 40 years since the last study have seen some dramatic changes in the way Public service, public service performed, and in the way the public service was perceived. So, I was very glad for the opportunity to be able, three months after entering office, to convene this important commission. And as the Minister of State can tell you, it was on my mind from day one. 
because with my first meeting of the staff of this ministry, the Ministry of the Presidency, my first meeting with the senior public servants at the Art Young Conference Center, I emphasized the need for um, a report, the need for having an unrivaled public service, the need for examining the conditions under which our public servants uh, had to function. He reasoned that without an efficient public service, the vital agencies of the state will be unable to function well, not aviation, not public health, and certainly not law enforcement. The president, in expressing his thanks to the commission for what he described as work well done, noted that while he wanted the commission to take its time in compiling the report, he did not want any unnecessary delays since the workers in the public sector have been eagerly awaiting an increase in their salaries, which government had announced will only be definite when the report has been completed. And many people expect that there's going to be some bonanza. I hope we'll discover that uh, the bonanza will come from their own efforts. The bonanza will come when they work hard and they do better than the next person. If they want to be lazy, they'll get a lazy person's um, uh, remuneration. If they work hard, they'll be rewarded for their hard work. And that is what people, not only in the public service, but in every area of endeavor must learn, that actual output is related to input. The president said that copies of the report will be handed over to the members of the cabinet for perusal and discussion before copies are handed over to the unions in the public service and the National Assembly. At the end of this process, the president expects that discussions will commence between the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Social Protection and the various unions representing this sector. It was one of the campaign promises of the then opposition that Bartika, Madia Lethem and Mabaruma will become towns. After the recently concluded local government elections, Bartika, Mabaruma and Lethem became towns while Madia is slated to become a town later this year where the legal and geographic difficulties have been ironed out. But since the attention was declared for Bartika, President Granger has been pushing the town to become the first green one in Guyana and even the Caribbean. It is his vision that the town will lead efforts in green energy and green practices which can help in the fight against climate change. With a discreet interest in Bartica, the president on Saturday, May 6, joined the people of Bartica in the ceremonial declaration ceremony of the township celebrations, a historic event for the 185-year-old community. The event commenced with a military march pass parade at First Avenue Bartica, followed by interfaith prayers, a wreath-laying ceremony, and the official township declaration by head of state who said that this community, being one of the oldest in Ghana, is most deserving of township status. And today, I'm filled with emotion as Bartica has finally come of age. You are a town now. This is your moment to dazzle the rest of Guyana. History is being made here. Instead of being the third, we're now the seventh town in Guyana. And you should all be proud of your achievement. And I congratulate you. The president, who just returned from the United States after attending the U.S. Caribbean Central American Energy Summit said that Ghana has to move more quickly to develop a green economy and that Bartica, as the country's first green town, must lead the way in wind and solar energy, solid waste management, electrical vehicles and recycling. Bartica is going to become a laboratory for Ghana's green economy. I would like to see students from all over the country. I'd like to see residents of other countries coming to Bartica to learn how to be green. Every school, every hospital, every police station, every government building has to move quickly over the next four years to adopting sustainable sources of energy, renewable energy. No more addiction to gasoline and diesel. We're moving to clean energy. 
so Bartika must lead the way. It must be a model town for our green economy. He also urged residents to become a magnet for economic growth and for attracting investments and gave assurances of his government's commitment to ensuring that the necessary infrastructure and systems are put in place to facilitate such growth. It was perhaps this commitment that led to the commissioning of the first ever neonatal intensive care unit, the NICU, and the refurbishing of the main operating theater at the Bartica Regional Hospital on the same day. The NICU was established as a result of a collaborative venture between the Ministry of Public Health and the Ghana Help the Kids charity. President Granger said that now that Bartica has achieved township status, it must possess all of the necessary resources to ensure that residents are provided with all of the services that they need. He expressed appreciation to the doctors, nurses and staff of the Bartica Hospital who have been working tirelessly to save lives, particularly those of the newborn babies. He said that regardless of the cost, his government will ensure that there is a national maternity hospital in the near future. We want to aim at zero maternal deaths, zero, not just reducing the deaths of our babies, uh, but zero. There's, there should be no reason in 2016 why babies have to die. Minister of Public Health Dr. George Norton informed that while neonatal mortality rates have been decreasing in Guyana, it continues to be a major public health concern, which is why it remains the primary focus of his ministry's Health Vision 2020. Ministry of Public Health, under the current administration, is committed <laughs> to ensuring that the health needs of all its citizens are met. Infant mortality rate is one of the indicators for the Sustainable Development Goal. Hence, the Ministry is moving towards enhancing its pre- and postnatal programs and services. As a result of vast improvements in the range and quality of services provided by the Bartica Regional Hospital over the past eight months, referrals to the Georgian Public Hospital Corporation, GPHC, have reduced by almost 50 percent. Regional Health Officer of the Kuyuni Mazaruni Region, Dr. Edward Sagala, recalled that during the elections campaign in 2015, President Granger had promised residents of Region 7 that he would ensure that the hospital was upgraded to become a full-fledged regional hospital, and this feat has been achieved within his first eight months in office. For the first time in the history of the Bartica Hospital, residents can be treated by medical specialists such as dermatologists, ear and throat specialists, cardiologists, gynecologists, general surgeons and pediatricians. The hospital also holds a monthly mental health clinic led by renowned Guyanese psychiatrist Dr. Byro Harry. Prior to these services being taken to Bartica, patients had to travel to Region 3 and Georgetown for specialized medical care. Now we will take a look inside the President's Diary. With the firm belief that education is the foundation of any type of development, President David Granger on Saturday commissioned two boats at Rivers View under the government's Boat Buses and Bicycles plus Breakfast and Books or 5 Bs program. One of the boats was donated by Mr. Nazar Mohammed and his son Mr. Azruddin Mohammed of Mohammed's Enterprise Mining Sector and will be used to ferry children to and from school, while the other, which was donated by Burby's businessman Mr. Peter Lewis, will be used for medical and other emergencies. President Granger expressed a satisfaction and pride in the manner in which the private sector has been participating with the government. He said that the support that the 5 Bs program has been receiving is tangible evidence of the fact that Guyanese are ready to be unified and to move the country's development forward. I'd like to thank the donors and everyone who was part of this program. As you know, in the Ministry of the Presidency, particularly the Minister of Social Cohesion, has been driving the program for boats, buses and bicycles in particular. And I'd like to thank her for continuing to make, con uh, make these arrangements and these contacts. She's moving from river to river, so if you don't have any rivers without boats, just let her know. <laughs> 
But this is a good day for Riversview. Thank you. May God bless you all. And please use these boats for the purposes for which they are intended. On Sunday, President David Granger, who was in Bartica for the township celebrations, handed over a hundred thousand dollars donation to the Saint John the Baptist Anglican Church in Bartica, Cuyuni Mazaruni, on behalf of the Ministry of the Presidency, to be used as seed money for bursary awards for children who are successful at the recently sat National Grade Six examinations. This donation was handed over to Canon Alfred David, who, along with the members of the rectory of the church will determine the criteria for distribution. President Granger said that once arrangements are in place, further financial support will be provided for an ongoing bursary program. He added that his government continues to emphasize the importance of ensuring that every child attends school. He said that even as mothers are celebrated, it is important that the future of the next generation is secured. The Ogle International Airport was officially renamed the Eugene Francis Correa International Airport on Monday by President David Granger as a tribute to the sterling contribution of a man who pioneered the development of the aviation sector and Ghana's gold and diamond industry. The late Eugene Francis Correa was also a parliamentarian and minister of government who was born in Buxton on August 21, 1899 and died in 1973 at the age of 74. Speaking at a ceremony at the airport to mark the occasion, President Grange described Correa as insightful and a visionary and a nationalist who was a strong advocate of a strong domestic air transport system. A pilot, Correa in 1957, opposed an agreement entered into by the British Guyana government and the British West Indian Airways, BWIA, for the latter to manage and advise the domestic aviation sector. Correa was appointed Minister of Communications with responsibility for the aviation sector in December 1964, a post he held until October 1968. He also served as Minister of Works and Hydraulics. In other aspects of his public life, the late Correa championed the right of Guyanese to be appointed to executive positions in the public service in the then British Guyana. On Monday, President Granger and First Lady Ms. Sandra Granger attended the delegation of the European Union to Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago and for the Dutch Overseas Countries and Territories Europe Day reception, which was held at the National Cultural Center. There, President David Granger and head of the delegation of the European Union to Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago and for the Dutch Overseas Countries and Territories, Ambassador Jeremy Vitek committed to strengthen relations between Ghana and the European Union. President David Granger in his remarks noted that the EU and Ghana forged a special bond four decades ago, beginning with the historic George Strong Agreement of 1975. Since then, he noted Ghana has shared a relationship of mutual cooperation with the regional body in a number of areas. The European Union is one of Guyana's main trading partners. Guyana exported goods valued at over EU uh, euros 192 million, or about 15% of Guyana's exports to the European Union in 2013 alone. Guyana's imports from the EU were valued at 122 million euros. Guyana has been a beneficiary of cooperation with the European Union as you've seen in the exhibition on your way upstairs. Guyana's benefit in agriculture, in education, in food security, in governance, in health, in hinterland development, in aviation and maritime infrastructure, and in sea defense and coastal zone management. President David Granger on Wednesday met with New Zealand High Commissioner to Ghana, Her Excellency Jan Henderson, to discuss bilateral cooperation and other issues. The meeting was held at the Ministry of the Presidency.
High Commissioner Henderson, in a brief comment after the meeting, spoke highly of the cordial relations between Ghana and New Zealand, not only through the Commonwealth and cricket, but also through a strong program of bilateral cooperation. New Zealand has been lending support to Ghana in the implementation of the mangrove restoration project and the small ruminants project, which focuses on building capacity in the development and application of improved husbandry practices and reproductive technologies. On that same day, His Excellency attended the installation ceremony of the ninth Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Nigel Harris. Professor Harris, a Guyanese by birth, is taking up the mantle of leadership of this premier tertiary education institution at a time when it is facing many challenges and is about to embark on a retooling process. The President has placed at the top of his agenda the development of a green economy and the creation of an enabling environment for businesses to thrive. Ghana's premier trade fair and exposition, commonly referred to as Guy Expo, was formally declared open last evening by President David Granger, who used the opportunity to push for the use of green energy and green technologies. The annual event, which is hosting approximately 260 exhibitors from the small, medium and large-scale businesses, is a special celebration for the country's Golden Jubilee and is being held this year under the theme 50 years Ghana means business, promoting enterprise, driving productivity. The president believes that this event can go beyond launching new businesses and services, but must also lead the way towards development and promoting green solutions, which will see the vision of a green economy and a green Guyana becoming a reality. Green solutions are needed to address the challenges and threats facing our country, particularly those caused by climate change, those caused by the need for coastal zone management, the need to control flooding, drought, environmental degradation, deforestation, the need for conservation of protected areas and waterways, and the provision of a safe environment. Ladies and gentlemen, a green economy is good for Guyana. It will lead us to a good life for all. There is no better vision I can give to future Guy Expos. Over the next 50 years of Guyana's growth, than the need to usher in a green economy. It is my hope that Guy Expo 2016 could inspire the business community to do just that. Green development is good for business, he said, and as such believes that Guy Expo is the ideal place for the green solutions to be conceptualized. Green development is good for business. Guyana's green revolution will spawn a wide range of businesses, will produce and generate employment opportunities, electric cars, hybrid vehicles, energy saving devices solar home systems, organic foods, recycling plants, environmentally friendly buildings, green construction materials, biodegradable packaging materials, sustainable agricultural and green financing options are just some of the areas around which new enterprises and jobs would be created. The president, who has always been pushing for the sustainable approach to the exploitation of the country's natural resources in the fight against climate change, since his administration took office, said that Ghana must wean itself off of its addiction to fossil fuels, since the importation of these fuels exacts a heavy burden on the economy. Ghana in 2012 alone expended the equivalent of 24% of its gross domestic product and petroleum-based products. It is in this context that the president said that Ghana needs a green development strategy which will create the needed transformation. We are going to transition our economy towards a renewable, clean and cheaper source of energy. We are going to craft a comprehensive coastal zone management plan to protect human habitation. We are going to craft 
coastal economic systems and ecosystems. We are going to create green enterprises and jobs. We will inculcate green education in our schools. We are going to adopt a green development strategy. On energy, the president said that Ghana will rapidly accelerate the transition towards renewable sources of energy as part of its green development thrust. The government, he said, would lead the way in transitioning towards greener renewable energy use. Every government building, including hospitals and schools, will, within the next five years, be utilizing alternative sources of energy, President Granger promised. Minister of Business Mr. Dominic Gaskin believes that Gai Expo 2016 is more than just an event. As the country prepares to celebrate its 50th independence anniversary, Mr. Gaskin said that the event provides the ideal opportunity for Ghana to evaluate its position and refocus on where it needs to be in the field. As a nation, we have a lot that we can be proud of. We have a beautiful country, as pointed out by Ms. Grant. We have a great natural wealth, and we enjoy a reasonably good-natured accommodation of ethnic, political, and religious diversity that many other nations have failed to achieve. However, when it comes to our economy, I believe that had we known back in 1966 that 50 years later we would be where we are today, perhaps we would have planned things differently. Because we have not become the dynamic, enterprising, regional powerhouse that we ought to have been after 50 years in the business of self-determination. GAI Expo 2016 provides a baseline from which we must progressively develop an economy that in 10 years time, while still growing, will be the envy of the region. And this is entirely possible. The ministry will be providing workshops to the exhibitors during the four days so that they can benefit not only from sales but expertise. The workshops will focus on the benefits of social media, packaging and labeling, creating a business plan and obtaining finance, among others. For the exhibitors, the event provides the ideal opportunity for their businesses to be given the necessary exposure for growth. Exhibitor Janelle Pierre, the founder of Bowtries, a small business which provides custom-made bow ties, said that the event provides her with the ideal opportunity to network and interact with her customers. Well, to me, missing an opportunity like this to interact with customers would be a terrible mistake if I were to do that. Because one of the things that I enjoy about business is interacting with customers. Just making them and delivering them is just not enough. As well as the networking opportunities it provides for me to meet other entrepreneurs and other persons who might be able to add something to my business or I can add something to theirs. And it's a great opportunity to meet with some international persons as well because it's Guy Expo and persons expect so much from it so they come out in their numbers. Young and old entrepreneurs, small and large businesses, even the ordinary person who has a product to promote has a space at Guy Expo. For the makers of naked skin soaps, which seem to have created a hype in the visitors to the booth, Sky Expo holds a special place since it is the place where the product was first launched and showcased. Well, on a broad scale, we do three types. So uh, we do face soaps, body soaps, and exfoliants. Uh, so the face soaps are uh, crafted for your face. They're a bit gentler. The exfoliants have uh, something inside them to give you a bit of a scrub. Uh, and the body soaps are just, I guess, a little bit more plain, like your uh, regular body soaps, not anything extra inside of it. This is your first time at Guy Expo? Uh, no, we actually launched our company uh, two Guy Expos ago. Uh, so this is our second time. We didn't come last year. Uh, but yeah, we're here this go around. Mr. Wayne Barrow, whose business is based on recycled materials in a focus on the environment, said that the event is a type of forum which provides a showcase needed for his business. Guy Expo helps us in a variety of ways. It helps us to be better in terms of focusing on the marketing. It helps us to be better prepared to serve. And I, I think this, 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 there's a string of, of, of uh, positive things that come out of, of this the interconnection, the relations, because we, we, we associate, this, this booth is made up of persons of varying skills, 
who attended um, our, our interweave uh, solutions training course. And to help them, we, we fused their skills together, pepper sauce, season it, um, and made products, candle um, made from beeswax. So these are different persons coming together just to present their products to the face of Diana. That has brought us to the end of this week's edition of This Week with the President. Thank you for joining me. For regular updates on the Ministry of the Presidency, go to our website at www.motp.gov.gy. Like our Facebook page, Ministry of the Presidency, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at MOTP Guyana. Do have a safe and blessed rest of the week, Guyana. Goodbye.